and vote in 2020. Well, less than a third of Democrats support your what you're talking about. I mean, you just said before it's not that popular. It's really unpopular. I don't know about that. I mean, I've it's seen different polls. 20, I saw I, one that said 75 percent of primary Democrats did. I saw one that said 45 percent. I said one. I saw one that yeah. said 27 percent. But anyway, I think that was of all Americans. It's not well. Okay, let's even yeah. say all Americans. Not popular. You, if you were nominated, be running against Donald Trump who wants to build a wall, and they can say about you, open borders, open borders. All you want to do is open borders. How do you respond to that quickly and say, well, I, I really don't want to have open borders when you want to decriminalize? That will maintain border security. There's still consequences for coming across the border. We have 654 miles of fencing. We have planes. We have boats. We have guns. We have thousands of personnel at the border. Uh, that's a right-wing talking point. The other thing I would say is that, you know, so threatening nuclear war against another country over Twitter is not disqualifying. Keeping little children on cold concrete floors with mylar blankets that, who haven't had something to eat and don't have soap or toothbrushes. Uh, you know, these images of people behind a fence that are telling reporters that they haven't had anything to eat. I think that is completely more disqualifying and things that we can point out and win this election with more than the idea that people are still going to end up in a court process. They're just not going to have this misdemeanor on their yeah, record. You said it's a it's a right wing Republican talking point, but it's also Jay Johnson's talking point. The DHS secretary wrote a piece in The Washington Post where he said uh, your plan to decriminalize uh, immigrants cr crossing the border illegally. He said it was essentially open border. So it, it isn't a uh, a Republican talking point. He's actually coming from lots of Democratic strategists and, and the Obama administration. I Obama respect Trump. Secretary Johnson, and it's unfortunate that he's basically adopting that right-wing talking point. He also, look, okay, it's also true that there's a legacy to protect there of, of that Department of Homeland Security, and so it doesn't surprise me that his position would be, no, 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 keep it, when I'm saying we actually need to improve this. Uh, I think that a lot of folks who have looked at this who understand immigration law say that it would make more sense to get rid of this law because we still have consequences. It's still illegal to cross the border. So if it's a civil, uh, a civil, it's it's against the law, but it's a civil <coughs> fine or civil penalty. What happens when somebody is intercepted? Well, what happens is what happens to a lot of folks right now is that you're still uh, taken into custody and processed. You still have a court date. You still have to appear. If somebody's making an asylum claim, they can make their client claim. They have to appear in court. If you're undocumented and you're not making an asylum claim, you still have to appear in court. If you repeatedly fail to show up in court, then that turns into a crime like it does for other civil offenses. So, you know, but, I just, but, but when there were going to be ice raids, you know, that the president said that there were going to happen a couple weekends ago, people spoke out against them. Those were people who, according to the administration, had not shown up to their court dates repeatedly. Yeah. The way that we handled this in the 2013 legislation, right, was that people that were here before a certain date right, should be put on a pathway to citizenship. So what we're talking about here are not people that just showed up yesterday. We're talking about people who have been here, who have lived here for years and years and established roots. They've been productive members of society. They've been paying taxes. They have kids and family members here. That's a different case than somebody that, that just came over. Okay, just hey, finally, fans. Hey, hey, so go. Listen, man, nobody uh, heart is more broken watching these kids being abused and mistreated than, than, than me or you or anybody else here. It disgusts everybody, disgusts the whole world. But isn't there some other way to deal with that than saying decriminalize the border? Because the thing is, it seems like to me, you're trying to solve one problem which everybody cares about, but then you're creating this other political problem which is freaking everybody out. So can't you come up with some proposal that just says you can't mistreat these kids and protect the kids without making it seem like you're, you're saying come one, come all across the border? I mean, well, I mean isn't there I some think... other answer, man? Because your answer is you've got the right motivation to try to protect those kids, but it seems like it's causing political problems. Look, uh, Donald Trump has not been bashful in his cruelty. I'm not going to be bashful in my common sense and compassion. Yeah, I just think, uh, Van, that this is a time when we have to lead. Yeah. And I believe that if we make the case uh, that but, that but I've could, been but making, could you pass a law? Are... I'm asking you because you know more than I do. Could you pass a law that just that just better protects those kids? without decriminalizing the border. Is that possible or is it not possible? Well, I think that as long as that law is still there, you're going to have the tool that a future administration needs to do exactly what Donald Trump did.
though you're still vulnerable. Yeah. Secretary Castro, I appreciate your time.